Outside of our ISP, the next most important piece of equipment that we thoroughly understand its logical functions is what most people call a home router. In reality, it's much more than that. In reality, technicians should really refer this as a multifunction network device because it contains much more than just a router. So let's break it down and take a look. So what is in a home multifunction device? In other words, what people call a router. Many things. Firewalls, a router that does include a router. Network address translation service. There's a DHCP service. There's a wireless access point inside and a network switch. There's actually more. I'm not going to go into some of those. I'll talk briefly about other functions and logical functionality inside this one device, this multifunction device, as we get to the end of this session. We're going to take and go through these one by one so that you have a better understanding of each of the logical components in a typical multifunction device. A lot of the functionality and embedded logical components that are found in today's multifunction devices are provided by embedded Linux. Linux is actually burned into a chip on the circuit board that's inside the multifunction device and it provides a lot of the functionality such as the router itself, the firewall, the NAT service, the DHCP service, and more. The firewall is the second logical component that we're going to start with. This slide kind of breaks down and helps you understand as a student where are these logical components one to another. So we're going to be talking primarily about the firewall. And you can see that the firewall's position is right between the ISP, which we call the WAN, and where our router interface begins. And we'll see our router functionality happening here. But the firewall provides protection between the World Wide Web, or the ISP, and our internal home network. So what do firewalls really do? Notice the green lines, and they have arrows going in both directions. In essence, firewalls allow all traffic in and out that originates from inside your home network. If you have an iPad or an Android phone inside your home and you're going out and surfing the web, the firewall understands very easily that this traffic is originating from inside your home. That traffic is fully capable of coming in and out using various ports, various TCP ports, UDP ports, and we'll talk about those later. But basically the firewall is open to allowing traffic coming in and out as long as that traffic originates inside your home network. Anything that comes from the outside that is unsolicited, unrequested, your router understands what traffic is not coming from inside your home network. It's possibly hostile. It will drop and block all of that traffic. So that is basically what firewalls do. Now there are more complex versions in a typical business and enterprise, they get much more complex than this. But fundamentally, this is what your firewall is doing. Here are some of the configuration elements of your firewall. You can see there's some areas here. We're looking at the firmware of the router. And you can say you can enable your firewall or you could disable it and turn it completely off. Wouldn't recommend that. And there are some check marks here where we can block anonymous internet requests, we can filter multicast. You do need to understand these basic firewall options. Uh, the ones that are generally checked are, con are considered default. It is good for you to understand and start to begin to study these and understand what they do. You can pause your video and take a quick look at this. You can also go to Wikipedia and look these up. Most manuals for your router that you buy or the multifunction device that you purchase, we'll go into some detail and explain these. Firewalls are very customizable and can be configured to do things that they normally don't allow. So for example, if I wanted to re help my wife who was inside the home and I'm at work and I want to remote desktop through 
our router or firewall and give a hand to my wife who's at home, normally that would be stopped and dropped because it originates outside the home network. That's what a firewall does. But there is features in your firewall called port forwarding and they allow you to give exceptions to this rule of not allowing traffic outside of your home into your home network. So we'll take a look. One of the firewall configurations is called port forwarding and it just simply allows a firewall exception. So here you can see I have I have an exception set up. So I'm going to allow port forwarding. This is a firewall exception and I'm going to allow certain traffic from the outside to be able to come into the home. Normally firewalls don't allow that. So here is a router configuration web page and I'm in the port forwarding section of my firewall and I'm creating an exception and I'm saying look if you want to remote desktop you're going to be using a TCP port 3389. You can come through the firewall even though you originate outside the network but you must go to this one IP address which is let's say my wife's computer. So you can see I have created an exception to normal firewall behavior. Another exception to our firewall or another customization that we can make to our firewall behavior is called a DMZ, Demilitarized Zone. And basically it allows you to take one PC on your home network and make it available to and expose it to all unsolicited, unrequested, very possibly hostile network traffic on the internet. This does have risks but there are reasons why we allow this functionality. You can only generally, most home routers only allow one PC at a time to be placed on the DMZ. In other words, basically remove all firewall protection from one PC on the internal network. You may be hosting a web server, an FTP server, SharePoint server, a game server, or a video server, and it needs to be exposed to the internet. So that DMZ functionality in your your firewall is available. Now I'm showing you Link Syst firmware. So if you have a D-Link or a Netgear or somebody else's router or multifunction device, just drive around a little bit in the interface, you'll find most of these settings. Notice the DMZ, we can enable it or disable it, and we must assign an IP address. Our third logical component is the actual router. Yes, the multifunction device really does have a router. The embedded Linux is providing the router functionality for your multifunction device. There is a router, but there is much more in that plastic box that you paid $90 than just a router. So now we're looking at the third component, which is the router, and this is typically the Cisco symbol for a router. So when you see this symbol, that is indication of a router. So here again, we're showing you the relationship of these various logical components one to another. So we see the firewall. It separates our router from the ISP. And then the router is sitting right here between. This is a major component, major logical component, between the subnet of our WAN and the subnet of our LAN. So why a home router? Why do we need a router at home? Whenever we have two subnets, and we'll get into this as we get into Network Plus, but as we have two subnets, and you do, your ISP is going to bring you a series of IP addresses, subnet masks, gateways, and this is on a specific subnet. This is going to be your wide area network. Your home is going to have a very different subnet. It's going to have a different subnet mask, a different gateway, a different TCP IP information. And because of those differences, a router must be present in order to allow traffic to go from one side to the other. Routers decide what network traffic is directed to the LAN or to the WAN kind of like a traffic cop who directs traffic at an intersection. So let's begin by first looking at the LAN side of our router. This is the interface of the Linksys router and we can actually look at our home side of the router, the LAN side of the router. We have a network card, we have an IP address for that network card, we have a subnet mask, and these components are making up our subnet for our home 
it is very different than the WAN side, as we'll see in a minute. Now, on the WAN side of the router is a different configuration. Our ISP is providing us an IP address. We see a network card on that side of the router. So the router has two network cards. There's its MAC address. We saw that on the LAN side. Now, on the WAN side, we get an IP address from our ISP. This is a internet usable IP address. Notice we have a very different subnet mask. And our gateway on the WAN side is the next router that we have to see in order to get network traffic, our internet traffic, out to the internet. This subnet is very different than our home subnet. That's what a router does, is allow traffic to move seamlessly and correctly from one subnet to 